I would now like to introduce today's speaker, uh, Dr. Jacob Berger. He is a graduate of the Arizona School of Dentistry. When he isn't practicing dentistry, Dr. Berger enjoys spending quality time with his daughter and his wife. When he came, uh, when he can find the time, he likes to play basketball, lift weights, and enjoy outdoor activities. His past career was barbering in the Tampa area. Dr. Berger attends church regularly and uses his Sundays to catch up with his family over lunch. He is currently an active member of the Hispanic Dental Association, the American Dental Association, and an Ameri and American Academy of De Developmental Medicine and Dentistry. Please welcome Dr. Jacob Berger. Hello, hello everybody. I hope all is well with everybody out there. And uh, whether you be coming home from school or work or whatever the case is, I hope to utilize your time well today as we get started. Uh, in a minute, I'll be going through some, some slides just to keep us all on the same page and make sure we're really getting into uh, what the presentation is today. But in the end, it's not so much about what you see on here, but maybe what you get out of this. Um, if you could, I'm gonna have you, if you could pull up the presentation for me to have access to it, I'm gonna go ahead and start flipping through some of these as I get into the story a little bit um, and what I hope to share with everybody who, who is attending. Give me just two seconds. Can you help pull up that presentation for me? There we go. Thank you, I appreciate that. So whether there be two people listening today or 50 people listening today, or 100 people listening to today. Uh, that really isn't gonna make or break anything that I have to share today. Uh, I, my hope would be that anybody who's listening maybe has a pen and paper out and can kind of lean in. I think it's important that we do our best to try to lean in uh, to, whatever, to whatever it is we learn. And, uh, and I think it's important that we do that, whether it be in dental school or in CE courses or in different opportunities that we have. So if I could encourage anybody to do anything before I get into to who I am and what I plan to share is, is if I could just grab a pen, uh, grab a piece of paper and, and get ready, hopefully for an hour that could potentially change the trajectory of your path, your career, your future uh, with something as simple as maybe hanging out for an hour in the comfort of your own home. Um, a little bit about who I am and, and my story. I was that kid that showed up to class late, forgot my pen and paper didn't do the homework, maybe skip class. School wasn't important to me. Really where I was headed and, and what I wanted to accomplish wasn't important to me. That wasn't something that was on my mind. And, and in this moment, what I'm referring to is maybe my high school years where I was really just going with the flow. Whatever happens, happens. GPA wasn't important to me. Um, really what was important to me was just hanging out with my friends, having a good time, maybe a little bit of basketball here and there and until I realized my GPA wasn't even gonna be good enough to play in my uh, junior year of high school. That's the kind of kid that I was. And I know that may not be a lot of you and we may have differences in our stories, but there was a moment for me where I had to flip a switch. Now flipping a switch for everybody is different. Some may do that in middle school, some in high school, some in college. Maybe some take 10 years into their career to really flip that switch. Now flipping that switch is different, like I said, for everybody. But for me, what it took was deciding that I was gonna take ownership of where the next 10, maybe the next 20 years of my life went deciding on who was I going to make proud along the way and who was I going to disappoint along the way. And when I flipped that switch, it translated into and resulted in a better athlete, a better student, a better a friend, family member, really a, a better version of me altogether. And that switch, as we talk a little bit about what it could mean for you guys today that are listening in, could be the thing that puts you in a position to be the president of a dental company or dental uh, organization. It could be the switch that flips that leads you to have the practice of your life or, or maybe open up two or 10 or, or open up a DSO. It could be the switch that makes you the best resident or, or best specialist in your area. But that's up to you. Now, I know that some of you guys are college students or all of you are college students. Most of you know what BYOB is, right? I, bring your own beer. Today, it's going to be different. Today, it's going to be bring your own breakthrough. I know it's a little corny, but but truly, it's not up to me. It's not up to ASDA. It's not up to a DSO or an organization. It's up to you. So what's in it for you today? Hopefully with the pen and paper, you're able to reflect and think about what you're trying to accomplish. And will you take the stuff that we're talking about today and use it as a log that you toss into the fire 
to make this the beginning of, of a crazy, awesome, ignited uh, a, a career builder? Or will it just be a wasted hour? I can't make that decision for you. I can't make the decision on how serious you take the last two years or three years or last year of college. I can't decide any of that for you. But what I can do is maybe provide a couple of tools that over the last 10 years have been my way of launching my career and launching what I believe to be my future, whether it be 30 years or 50 years, or maybe the legacy that I leave for my family. Uh, I'm going to break it down into hopefully pretty, pretty easy categories. And the first one, as we get into this four fundamentals, is going to be hustle. Hustle for me is, is kind of right now a romanticized term or word. We hear it on TV and YouTube videos, uh, different concepts. We see it all the time. Everybody's talking about the grind and hustling. And, um, and it's so real for a dental student, but we don't often picture that as a dental student. We usually picture ourselves in the day-to-day -day of study, test, regurgitate material, study, test, regurgitate material, back and forth, back and forth. But then we see maybe the life of an athlete where all they're doing is waking up early, training, lifting weights changing their diet, changing their mindset, watching videos, staying up late to travel to the game. That's the kind of hustle that I believe we can have as students, as dentists, as clinicians, as leaders that we don't always have. We have this kind of a easy, chill, relaxed job where we just sit back and read a sheet of paper, decide how we'll use it, let it turn through the gears and then spit it back out into an exam and hope we get a grade. But what I'm gonna encourage you all to do is to flip that. Make hustle. A real thing in dentistry. Make hustle being the first person to class and the last person to leave. Our version of shooting, shooting 500 free throws like maybe a Kobe Bryant or a LeBron James or a Michael Jordan may be that you read through your textbook more so than your classmates did. That's the kind of hustle I'm talking about here. Um, for me, that hustle was different. For me, that hustle in that moment when I was a dental student or, or even an undergrad, I'll even go back further when I was in, in high school, was when I started to cut hair. I found a gig that I thought was fun. I enjoyed myself and it made a little bit of money. And for me, what hustle meant for that was waking up and being the first person to open up the doors. I had the key to the barbershop. I would open it up. I would sweep the floors. I would flip the lights on. I'd turn the music on. I'd oil up my, my, my clippers and I'd get ready to bust my butt for the day. And I'd work sometimes through lunch. I'd stay late. I'd take every single client that knocked on that door, even when the door locked. Because I was trying to hustle to create a name for myself, to create a business, to create a corner that everybody knew that that barbershop right there is the barbershop. But what does that take? It took some hustle on my part. Having that mentality, maybe even that athlete, athlete mentality is what it takes to really take it to the next level. Now, some of you may already be hustling. Some of you may have already flipped that switch. So none of this is going to be new to you. And I, I get that. But sometimes we just need a little reminder, maybe in a, a little tap in the back, maybe some encouragement that you aren't the only person hustling, so keep it up. Or maybe you aren't hustling and you need to get your stuff together. That's what I'm trying to get at here with this hustle topic, with this, with this part of four fundamentals. The hustle part is getting yourself into gear, deciding that I'm going to own this and I'm going to take this to the next level and I'm going to train like I've never trained before. That's what I'm hoping you guys do. So, so what can what can hustle be in your sense? I would say being relentless with your grades, being relentless with your studying, maybe deciding that I am going to bust my butt and maybe skip out on that golf tee time, or I'm going to skip out on that movie time. Now, I'm not telling you to not be balanced. We got to be balanced. But when it's game time, flip the switch. It's game time. When it's go time, maybe to a movie or to a restaurant or date night or your family, you got to spend time there. But when you're in the game, when it's time to be in class, when it's time to decide on, a, on an interview that's coming up or maybe a resume that you're writing, go all in. Wake up early that morning. Drink the coffee before everybody wakes up and get started on that. That's the kind of hustle that I think we can all have and it's easy to have, but you got to want it. This is a, a, a quote, a meme that I found that I thought really embodied what I'm trying to get at here. I want you to take a second, maybe take a picture of that. Maybe write it down. Read it two times. Don't let it go to waste. I didn't pick it and put it up there for it to go in vain. Faith will get you to a point. Luck will get you to a point. But to achieve the kind of success that you wanted before dental school, that you wanted before undergrad, it takes work. Some of you have it naturally, and I get that. But that doesn't mean you can take shortcuts. It doesn't mean that you can cheat through that. You got to put in the work. And if you can do that, 
it not only will help you achieve your highest potential, it actually helps you achieve even more than that. You'll meet people that you didn't think you would meet. You'll get opportunities you didn't think were possible. All because you put in a little extra work. Maybe you were in the game a little longer. Maybe when you had the opportunity to go home at five, you stayed till six and you met hopefully somebody that could sharpen you or push you to the edge. Now, the next thing that I believe is a, is a game changer in this process towards launching your career or changing the trajectory of where you want to go as a future practitioner or clinician or leader is desire to learn. I'm talking about real learning. I'm talking about leaning in type learning. Now, remember, guys, I was in dental school not too long ago. I just graduated in 2016. So I know what it's like to sit and hear something and let it go in one ear and out the other or be in the back of the classroom on Facebook. But when someone steps up on stage or when you have a class that you're truly interested in, don't we all kind of lean forward and get a little bit more engaged? That's the kind of learning that it's going to take. And it doesn't stop after dental school. And I want to make sure you guys know that. Like I, I, I'm out now and I've realized that the people who are stagnant, the people who are just coasting, maybe have already plateaued, they have decided that leaning into learning, it's not worth it. I've already put in my part. I've already done my part. I already did my learning. There's almost like a sense of like I've arrived. Like there's some destination that now that they're a clinician, and I'm talking about colleagues, I'm talking about people I just met, I'm talking about friends who are dentists now that walk the stage and they hit the pinnacle of where they wanted to be when it comes to learning. Now it's a hassle. Now it's a chore. Now it's a CE requirement. I'm telling you, if you can flip that and make it a goal to be intentional with your learning, it's really going to make a big difference. The kind of difference that's going to allow you to excel way past colleagues, but that may not be what you're looking for. Some of you aren't trying to do better than everybody else. Some of you just want to be the best version of yourself. Some of you want to know a ton for your patients, and you can't get that with just the day-to-day. -day. I promise, I tried, I did it in the beginning, and then I realized that, that switch that I flipped a long time ago, that was a one-time switch that we can roll with that momentum. And then when you start to feel yourself coming out of it, you already flipped that switch, you already have it. Just get back in the momentum and start to learn. So I wanna give a couple tips on things you can learn, things that I choose to learn that I hope you guys can take and use it as your own. This may be something to write down and maybe reflect on a little bit when we're done talking about this concept of truly wanting to learn, to be a lifelong learner. The first thing for me is CEs credits, classes, sign up for all of them, for webinars like this. Like I said, I'm already practicing, but last night I was on a webinar on scanning. The day before, I was at a leadership conference. The weekend before that, I was trying to learn about implants on an online course that I'm taking so that I can get my, uh, uh, it's like an implant continuum for lack of better terms. I'm trying to learn stuff and you can get that through CE courses. So don't look at it as a hassle. Don't look at it as a requirement. Look at it as weights, as your training and trying to condition yourself to be a better technician, a better uh, leader, a better uh, practitioner. Learn from CE, learn from others. The next thing, books. Uh, books are awesome, but books are, I don't like to read. I'll be honest with you guys. So I don't read, I actually listen to them. So I listen to audiobooks through Audible and Audible is kind of my go-to. I love using Audible and uh, every now and then I will pull and get my own uh, book. Uh, I'll show you guys a couple books that I've chosen to read. Not saying that you should choose to read these, but I just want to show you guys that I mean what I'm talking about right now. I don't say maybe read a book, but then I don't actually read books. Uh, here's one that I think is pretty cool. It'll help in every, every aspect of life. Uh, the Way of the Wolf. Y'all probably saw the movie, uh, The Wolf of Wall Street. I don't know if it's the most appropriate movie, but um, his book is awesome. So type that in, write that down, The Way of the Wolf. Another one, The Entre Leader. Teaching People How to Be Leaders in an Entrepreneurial World. This is by Dave Ramsey. Um, books galore, audio books. I found myself on the way to school and on the way to work listening to music. Cardi B is not going to help me with my future. Uh, uh, Two Chains is not going to help me with a patient that I'm seeing tomorrow. But my communication skills that I build on based off of books, my passion or my energy that I gain by reading a T.D. Jakes book or a book by Dave Ramsey as I try to build my financial future, that's where I'm going to get some real stuff from. Now, I know you guys know this. Like I said earlier, this isn't new to any of you, but I got to remind you sometimes. I have to remind me sometimes. We need each other to remind ourselves that we got to put in the work. We got to read. We got to learn. That's the only way we're going to continue on this trajectory. Now, some other things that I believe are, are, are really game changers and the world of, of being a lifelong learner that I wrote down. I didn't want to forget any of these. And I know my ADD, I'll forget all of these things. So I wanted to re read a couple of them out loud. Uh, 
online vendors, online companies, online things like ASDA or the ADA are constantly providing PDFs and videos. Use them. Use them like crazy. Uh, everything from Invisalign and orthodontics to implants and surgery to composites and, and materials. I would say every single website that sells a product from 3M to SB, uh, Bruxer, uh, the instruments where we uh, do extractions, A Titan is a brand. They all on their website have a, a page strictly on literature. Click literature and read it, print it. And instead of reading People Magazine or, or Sports Center in the morning, read that. It's all over the place. You just got to go chase it. The other things that I found that are helpful for me, magazines, and, and I think y'all know which magazines I'm talking about. I would say raise your hand if you've had a Jada magazine or a Jada journal. Uh, everybody's had Journal of American Dental Association. Uh, don't throw those away. Read those. And don't toss it until you're done reading them. And when you like an article, cut that thing out and paste it somewhere. There is so much knowledge in there. There's so much experience in there. And we just use it as maybe a paperweight or we throw it on the counter. These are the areas where you can be a learner on. What I want you to do, if you could, as we make this somewhat interactive, is I want you to write down some things that you're going to do while you're still a dental student to try to learn more than just the basics. What are you going to try to learn more about that doesn't just fulfill the requirements of dental school? Can any of you take that, that leap and to try to do more than just what's required? Or will you have that, I already have so much to do. Ah, I already have to study for board. Ah, I already have to take that exam or or I have my my CDCA coming up, my REB coming up. Who in here, who out of the people who are attending are going to write down, I'm going to learn from the literature page off of 3M cement. I'm going to learn every cement. I'm going to understand resin modified glass ionomers and how it works compared to self-adhesive res resin cements. I could go on and on about this stuff. These are the things that I'm so glad that I poured the cup of coffee and learned about instead of watching the Kardashians. Um, these are things I'm glad I, I read instead of, I was going to say instead of watching the Duke basketball game, but I watched that the other night. Uh, you got to have balance. You got to have balance. So while we have this uh, time together and, and a blank uh, page for a second, I want you to go ahead and write down a couple things that you're going to do to really try to learn and take it to uh, another level. What are the things that you're going to go to a coffee shop and study, even though you don't have to, but because you want to, because you want to launch your career, because you want to get fired up about something. You want to have that same heart when you see a football team getting fired up about the game and they're talking about, we must protect this house. What is your version of that going to be? Now, you guys can probably tell just from my, my facial expressions that I get passionate about this. It could also be that I drink a coffee and a rock star. It could be the combination of both. But I promise you, this is the stuff that is allowing me to have success. And I'm witnessing others around me who are having success. And we have some things in common. It's our drive and hustle. It's the learning that we're leaning into. It's the intentional learning. It's the booking the flight to go to the CE course, even though I'd rather go to Vegas and not learn a darn thing. But I got to think that I'm early in my career and I'm trying to launch myself somewhere else. So go ahead, write that down. Really reflect. Are you going above and beyond or are you just doing the requirements? Now, this last one that I want to dive into for a minute is uh, what I believe to be one of the most important, if not the most important, and that's getting involved. That's meshing with people. That's putting yourself in a position where you'll be around those that are like minded or be around people who are even steps above you. Maybe people who are more fired up than you. This may be being around a leader that you know is a better leader or putting yourself around people that you don't know so that you can find better leaders. Now, this is different for everybody, and the amount of involvement you do is probably going to be based off of your personality type. The introvert is going to stay at home. The extrovert is going to want to go out. But we have to find a balance in that so that we can be around people, like I said, that are like-minded or trying to accomplish the same things or at least put ourselves in a place where you might be around somebody. This, is two, this has two forks that I believe can, it can go, this topic of involvement. Like I said about the part where you can be around like-minded people or meet somebody who maybe even has flipped the switch faster than you did, or maybe their momentum is moving quicker than yours, but it also can mean being around the right person at the right time. This is a little bit about strategy right here. So I'm going to take the idea of just being around the right people and move that one to the side. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the strategic, being around the right people at the right time, maybe getting your name out there. This involvement is the kind of involvement that you cannot measure. We have no idea who you will meet that could change the entire path of your career. 
every time I sign up for a course or go to an event, I don't know if I'm going to meet the next boss that I have, the next friend that I have, the next business partner that I have, maybe the next enemy I have. You don't know, but you can't get it at home. You can't get it in your local gym. You can't get it doing sit-ups in your garage. You can't get it watching TV. You're going to have to get out and do things. Now, a lot of you are part of ASDA, and that's why you're already signed in to this webinar. That's how you heard about something like this. So I think most of you have already got that part. You already decided, I'm going to try to be involved so I can meet people, learn from people, but keep doing that. Don't let that stop. It's so easy when we graduate to stop, to think I already did enough. I'm exhausted. I just want to work on my patience. Sign up for the local chamber of commerce. Sign up to go to your local meetings. Sign up to go to dinners with other doctors. Sign up for the local study club. Go play in the volleyball league down the road. Go to a meeting that's related to the pediatric association if you want to be a pediatric dentist. Don't think that being on an island by yourself is going to get you anywhere. You may never meet the person that is your next business partner or the next investor in your side project. And you may never have enough energy to push on your own. And sometimes you need someone who's trying to push even harder than you to make you push harder than you would push on your own. So that's the involvement part that I think is important. There's a couple of things that I try to do to stay involved. And I wrote some of these down because I know it's easy to forget some of these. But I've tried to plug into local networks and study clubs. I get involved in community events with my church, maybe free dental days, giving out things at, at local charities, events with dentistry, but also events in business, emails and text messages. This is one that's a little different that I've been getting a lot better at lately. And I think a lot of us in the room may be millennials, and I know you're good with your cell phones. I email and text a lot of people with just the pure motivation of being involved in other people's lives. I'll give you a quick example. Today, one of my assistants got in a bad car accident. Uh, sorry, it was yesterday. She didn't make it in today. This happens all the time with car accidents or life or kids are sick or you never know what the reason is. But I text my dental assistant and say, hey, I heard you got in a car accident. I hope you feel better. If you need anything, let me know. That's an example of me getting involved in somebody's life, getting involved in an opportunity where maybe most dentists would just say, dang it, my assistant didn't show up again. I use that as a chance to plug in and invest in somebody. So I encourage you guys to do the same. When you meet CEOs, when you meet as the leaders, when you meet these people, get their cell phone number and text them periodically. Hope all's well thought about you. Hey, there's a great opportunity coming up. Do you want to meet up for a CE course? Get involved. I want you to think maybe of a couple areas that you can get involved in that you weren't already involved in and really challenge yourself to do that. Go ahead and write down maybe two things that over the next six months from now to let's say uh, a mid fall that you're going to do to get a little bit more involved than you were before. Go ahead, write that down. I know a lot of you may have been here to gain information, but I, I want you to also sit back and reflect a little bit too. This is a chance where we can be uh, really uh, reflective in the moment and think, am I even being involved enough? Is there too much involvement? Write down two things you want to get more involved in in the next six months. So I want to encourage you guys to run with the stuff that we talked about today. There's no magic pill for this. You have to hustle. You have to try to learn. You have to be intentional with your learning. You have to plug in and think about how strategic you can be with the people you're getting involved with and what it will get you. You have to do all of those things. So I encourage you to go do it. I can't do it for you at all. As they can't do it for you, organizations can't do it for you. If you can do those three things, I promise you, it will make you excel so quick if you take them serious. So a lot of you need to have that breakthrough moment. A lot of you have to flip that switch. And for those that have already flipped the switch, maybe this is a new moment to rekindle that fire or that passion that you had that got you into undergrad and it got you into dental school. Keep that momentum going. Don't let it slow down. Some of you are trying to achieve different things. For me, it might be success. It may be peace. It may be freedom. It may be celebration. It may be love. All of you are chasing something different, but that doesn't change the fact that these three things that we talked about can really get you there. Now, I talked about a fourth thing. I told you there's four fundamentals. There's an event that's coming up, and that's my fourth topic that I wanted to bring up. And, uh, and I know if you can do the first three, the last thing really embodies all of that together. This last event is called Launch, and, and it's really all about launching your career. I got the chance to be a part of it last year, and what I found it did is it put people that like to hustle in the same building at the same time. It put people that like to hustle on an airplane headed somewhere after class or after studying. 
It put people who were on an airplane headed to this event that were studying on the computer while they were on the way to this event so that they could learn something, so that they can be involved. So the culmination of involvement, learning, and hustle happened all on a two-day event that I thought was awesome. I got to learn, I got to share, I got to be involved, and I got to push myself. Now, this, this event is something that I believe we can all try to capture throughout our life at different things as we try to launch our career. But this particular one is one I want to share a little bit about. And, and I think we'll be able to talk to, we're going to be talking to the two students who, who have attended and can share a little bit about that as well. But before I close on this, I want to make sure that I really capture one last thing. And that's, you have to bring your own breakthrough. You can't get this stuff on somebody else's dime. You can't get this stuff off of your brothers and motivation or encouragement or your classmates. This is on you guys. Again, this whole thing could be a big waste. Could have wasted an entire hour of your night. Or you can decide if you're gonna use this and really change the trajectory. Now, a lot of the stuff, like I said, is repeat messages. You probably heard me say the same thing a couple of times, like game changing or hustle or push yourself or, or rekindling a fire, maybe flipping a switch. These are the same conversations you're gonna be having in 10 years. These are the same conversations I was having when I was a dental student, and I'm still having them now. So go, go take these first three concepts, look into this launch concept, and decide where you want the trajectory of your career to go. And I promise you're going to be so glad you did and you won't regret it. So with that being said, I wanted to really get into introducing two, two students that got an opportunity to be at the launch event. Uh, Lena, if you could jump on with us for a minute, and, uh, and Kelly, if you could jump on with us for a minute. I thought it'd be an also opportunity maybe for people to learn a little bit more about our experiences. If you could share who you are, where you go to school, and maybe a little bit about yourself, Lena and Kelly. Hi, my name is Lena. I am a fourth year dental student at the IU School of Dentistry. I'm about to graduate in May and uh, yeah, excited to be here. Hi, Kelly. I go to Midwestern in Arizona and I'm also graduating in May. It's good to be here as well. Awesome, well, I appreciate you both jumping on uh, and I, I believe I know I met Kelly. I remember hanging out with you and chatting a little bit. And Lena, I, I, like you said, you were in that breakout session. I thought this would be a great opportunity maybe to share a little bit of your experiences. And I know that we have a couple people who are going to be helping us, you know, stay on track and maybe narrate what we share so that people can learn more about the event. Um, but I hope even you guys, uh, you were hearing this, uh, these four fundamentals for the first time. I hope you, Lena, and, and you, Kelly, get something out of it as well. Absolutely. Took my notes. Awesome. Yeah, and, cool. and actually, I do remember um, your uh, breakout session at launch. Um, I I believe I wrote down a pretty uh, long list of things that I wanted to accomplish within my uh, my last year in dental school. Um, because I know a lot that happens to a lot of people in their last year. They're excited to get out and they kind of just want to finish the requirements. But um, uh, that list that I wrote down, I've I've been checking them off, and and it's pretty cool because I mean. I may have accomplished some of them without having written them down, but definitely, definitely pushed me to to get all of those things checked off. So it's kind of cool seeing it now. Cool. I'm glad it's coming to fruition. That's awesome. I, I promise you writing them down is a big, uh, big step that I didn't even do when I was a dental student. So I almost I'm a little jealous that I didn't do that my fourth year. But thanks definitely. for doing it for me. Yeah. Brittany, I, I assume some questions are going to pop up, or maybe Brooke can help us out with a few questions as we go through this. Well, and one of the questions that Brittany had brought up was um, just kind of one of Kelly and I saying what our favorite part of launch was. Um, Kelly, if you want to go first, I can answer after. Uh, yeah, sure. So my favorite part of launch was um, just getting out there, learning really what some options were what the company was about and meeting so many dentists who had been out for various periods of time some had been out for years and years some had only been out for a couple of months and getting through conversation their experiences and sharing my own as with students too like learning from students all over the country there was just open my eyes to like okay i've been in this little box and it's about to open up and i'm going out into the world and what do i actually want from what i've been doing for the last three years four years now um so i, I learned a lot about what i want what how i'm able to get it and who i can utilize their skills with my skills in order to get there 
Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd kind of echo that. I think the, the coolest thing about launch specifically um, was just kind of the environment of just no questions are off the table. Everyone was very open. And I think in general, if there was ever a, I guess, maybe a negative stigma about um, DSOs, it was really kind of washed away. And I know not all DSOs are the same, and I, I still think that today, but Harlan um, specifically, I think, really kind of changed the mindset of everybody there, whether or not they came in with a with a bad one, of course. But um, I, I think it, it. I think everyone that attended launch could say that they felt very, very um, informed and comfortable with everyone they spoke to um, that works with Heartland. And yeah, it was a really cool, cool experience. It was. Awesome. I appreciate you guys sharing. Um, I know this year coming up, I'm almost a little bothered that you guys can't be there because I think it's going to be just as awesome for round two again. So. Uh, but I'm, I appreciate you guys sharing your experiences with that. Let's see if we can get that other question going up on here. Lena, you may see it pop up before I do. Yeah, so um, the next question, um, what were your thoughts about dental support organizations before attending launch? Um, Kelly, again, if you want to start that. Okay. Um, you don't have to throw it to me every time. You can take a couple too if you want to go first. <laughs> But um, I, like everyone, I would go to the lunch and learns. I would, you know, I actually worked at a DSO at one point as a dental assistant before I went into undergrad. And it, there's always like a veneer. You don't really know what's the truth, what's not the truth. It's you're just there for lunch and then you move on your way. And it really doesn't have anything to do with you other than this abstract. Maybe sometime in the future, I might have to think about that. But going into my fourth year, it really wasn't abstract anymore. It's okay, now I need to decide what's true, what's not, how do I determine, how do I filter what's fake and what's reality? And going to the event was really eye-opening because it was 24 hours a day, two to three days solid, just nonstop conversations with people. If there had been veneers, it would have been cracked, but nobody ever had that. It was very honest, very open. I never felt like I overstepped any bounds about asking questions, and everyone was always very open with answering anything I had to ask. So that was really great. Um, everyone was very honest about, yeah, it's not perfect. It's not for everyone, but it was what was really great for me, and this is why. So that's... Yeah. And I, I think, and again, I'm piggybacking off of that. I completely agree. And I think, um, and it was last summer, so I'm not going to lie. Some of the specifics are are a little hazy, but I do remember even just in breakout sessions, um, as time got like went on and students got more comfortable kind of asking, I guess, the more bold questions, um, people were raising their hands and asking something maybe you would not feel comfortable asking and nobody ever hesitated. There was always an answer and it was very um, refreshing, I guess, because I think sometimes the lunch and learns are kind of planned out and focused so that you get the information that they kind of want you to, to get out of it um, versus this where everything was on the table, everything was spoken about and it was really great. Um, and it's, it's just nice to have the authenticness where you don't feel like they were kind of trying to paint the perfect picture, like any little flaw that had happened along the way, they're going to mention it too. So that just really, really was um, relieving. And I think Heartland kind of stuck out to me before, but um, more so after than that, after that, I kind of just, I think, walked around always having, you know, Heartland in my mind for um, after dental school. So. Thanks. Well, while we're on that topic, to be honest, uh, and, and just sharing a little bit about my experience with the DSO, I know I got into my story of who I am and what I uh, try to do to push myself. But the reason I even plugged into something like a Heartland Dental and being a part of the DSO is because I love involvement. And I have so many opportunities now to be a part of classes, to be a part of seminars, to be a part of celebrations. Uh, tomorrow night, I'm going to our quarterly doctor dinner where I'm going to sit with 38 other doctors and eat dinner and talk about things that we can do to get better, where we'll look at a case presentation, talk about company updates, learn about how to run a business and be a leader. I knew I wasn't gonna, I was going to push for that as a private practitioner, but I don't know that it would have been fed to me in the, with the amount of appetite that I have for it. And they encourage hustle. They encourage learning. They throw CE classes at you. And, uh, and and that's one of the reasons why I love plugging in. And one of the things that I did not know about a DSO before I signed up. And now I'm almost glad I landed where I landed. And that's why I share my story. And like you said, they were authentic about it. I think I was one of the ones who got some of those questions. I can't help but be authentic because I know that anybody out there could call me out on a lie. 
And uh, so I was being real when I said that I had a great opportunity uh, and, and I love the opportunity, but I'll also be real. And if I don't like something, I'll share what I don't like about it. But I'm still here. I'm still kicking and I'm still having a blast. And then um, one of the questions, uh, something along the lines of what techniques um, taught at launch and enhanced your leadership and communication skills. Um, so this is one of the things that wasn't at a breakout session. It was one of the, um, uh, I guess, the big speakers where everyone was in the same room. And um, it, it was basically uh, kind of laying out the idea of smart goals. Now, that was something I had already learned in undergrad, but I think when we were required to do them, for some reason, I just remember not really wanting to, but for some reason, at this point, I was kind of like, oh, wow, I remember what SMART goals are. Let's see if this can benefit me now. And so we went um, we went through the, what SMART goals mean. So if some, some of you are, are listening that don't uh, know what SMART goals are, it stands for specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. So that goes really nice with um, what Dr. Berger was saying, like taking uh, time to write down your goals. So that kind of gives you responsibility um, and, and ownership and how long it's going to take you um, and what the specifics are about that. So obviously, that's not so much a leadership skill as it is something for you. But once you start manifesting stuff like that, you're able to kind of translate that to the people around you. Um, and so, like you said, a lot of you are, are in ASDA. So I'm assuming a, a decent amount of you are probably leaders in ASDA, as I was as well. Um, and so it's kind of nice when you start feeling more confident about the things that you're um, writing down and all of that. It's it's really easy to then go in and share that with the people around you. Um, so, yeah, that was something that really stuck out to me that I felt uh, enhanced my communication and leadership skills within ASDA. And of course, going forward when I uh, graduate here in May. Uh, for me, what, um, one of the things that I learned most about leadership skills that I took away from launch was we it was also from one of the big sessions there was um some improv that was done and we had to do it with each other at the table in multi group breakouts um and then the improv group would lead us again and there was a lot of talked about um as far as you get these things in your head where you respond in a certain way and it's a you can respond negatively or you can respond positively and that is going to lead the attitude of the whole group if you lead the conversation into a yes and direction instead of a no direction or a yes but direction. And so that was really impactful um, for me, among other things. Just how to talk to people like that. I think one of the coolest things uh, that I liked was uh, Mark Sanborn. He was a speaker last year and my flight was leaving like 10 minutes after he spoke. And I was like debating, do I, do I listen to this and maybe gain something out of it or do I miss my flight? And he was that uh, engaging. And I remember him talking about customer service and how true customer service can really change your business and change uh, dentistry for you. And I learned so much from Mark Sanborn. That was kind of my biggest take home from that. Uh, like, like you guys, uh, Lena, you, you got a chance to see, I had a breakout group. So sometimes I may show up to teach something but I have to flip that off for a second and then become a learner for a minute. And I got to sit in there and sit in the back with my pen and paper. And like I said, lean forward and really get into it. And, uh, and he really, he killed it. He was awesome. I, I believe he's there again this year. So uh, I'm excited to see him again. Yeah, I'm jealous. I'm not going to be there again. So you gotta, you gotta soak that all in. I'll be in the back filming it like this for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And so one of the last questions, um, kind of what advice we would give to someone who may be interested in applying to attend launch. Um, I'll just say that it kind of, I think there with the group that, because a, a group of us came from my same school. And so I knew the different opinions um, coming into there. And it kind of, my biggest advice is really just to attend, because if you do attend, not really expecting to get much out of it i think they really created the environment where you you whether you're active or passive about it they're really they put on such a good conference that you got something out of it even if you weren't actively trying um because i will say i kind of maybe lean towards uh being the one that leans forward in these types of things just because i th i always find them so entertaining and fun and it, why not learn while you're doing it 
Um, but even the friends I have that are maybe the types to kind of leave a conference early, um, I, just to listen to them kind of chat about all the things they were learning was really cool. Um, I don't even think they realized that they were as engaged as they were. So um, if that doesn't inspire you to to want to apply, then I don't know what will. Yeah, I would say definitely, just like he said, and like Lena said, lean in because you're going to get more out of it than I can even express. This it's not just, even if you don't end up going with Heartland, you would still meet people that are going to enrich your career in ways that you don't even realize right now. Like I've connected with students all over the country, with doctors all over the country. I've been able to ask questions and talk to them about their experiences and just really gain a, a community of people that I know are going to support me once I'm out of school because they're already supporting me while I'm in school. And so, yeah, just apply and put your whole heart into it while you're there. Be yourself because if your personality isn't authentic, then you may end up getting hired on this false personality and that's not going to work out for you. So just really put yourself out there meet as many people as you can and just go have fun. It's a great experience. I would say also one last thing that I, on this topic is this will not be the last thing you apply for. So treat this application like you would treat the application to a residency. Treat this application like you would treat the application to be the next speaker at the next ASDA or ADA meeting. Uh, I can say for sure that I've put together like four applications now explaining or, or pleading my deal of why I think I would be a great asset to either a company or a project or why I would be the next best speaker at maybe like a, a an ADA uh, symposium or an ortho, orthodontic symposium. So use this as a practice opportunity. If you don't get selected, you still got a chance to pour your heart of why you would be a good person, why you would take this info and throw it into the flame and not let it waste. That's really what this is all about. That would be my uh, my suggestion on the application. Don't let it just be another, oh, uh, here's 500 words of why I think I should do it. It needs to be, this is why I'm the best person for this. This is why I deserve that flight there. And this is what I'll do with the material. So that's my suggestion. Yeah, I agree. I've already, I went and I've still applied for multiple things since then. Um, and it, really going through the process early helped me this past year applying for things. All right, wonderful. Thank you all so much. We're going to open up the questions to our audience at the moment. Um, remember, you can always put questions into the question box and we'll try to get to as many of them as possible right now. Um, the first question is, what at launch helped you identify better what you wanted out of life if you didn't have a clear picture before you went in? Um, I guess uh, one of those things where you're kind of forced to sit down and, and think about that, um, like Dr. Berger was saying, um, like if you if you're one of those people that haven't hasn't been um, actively trying to learn and get better like you're the person that maybe shows up late to class and 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 those sort of things he was kind of saying okay it's time to sit down and see where you want to go are you okay with that is that is that something that you want for yourself do you are you happy with being that type of person so I think like he he was he was comparing it to basketball and all those things so I think as far as like life in general <clears throat> you can apply that to everything so you can you can kind of shape your every aspect of your life with those kind of with those kind of principles, so. Yeah, I remember at one point we did um, mind mapping of our goals and it wasn't just professional goals, it was goals that we have personally and things we wanna to work towards um, to in order to feel successful and be happy. And laying them all out on paper and knowing that there were ways to get there that I didn't necessarily know were options, you know, finding a work-life balance, having support. You know, I, I knew I kind of wanted those things. I didn't know to the extent that I would be able to get them. Am I going to be able to, I didn't know. I don't know if I want to open a business someday, but I don't have to make that decision right now. I, I can do this and learn as much as I can. And, you know, maybe that's not in the cards for me, but I, I'm supported in the decisions I'm making right now. And I'm learning the what I need to get to those places eventually. And that helped writing it down and 
having a clear map of what I'm actually, what I, what do I want? Because I, I wasn't sure when I got there. I say let's jump into another question. I like these. <laughs> All right. The next question is, was there anything presented at launch that specifically challenged your view of the ideal dental career? I can answer this one first, if you guys will let me take this one. Yeah. Uh, give you a moment, too. Uh, I think it's crazy that an event like this is even being offered. That changed my view of what something like this uh, can exist. I didn't realize that a bunch of dentists can get together on a boat and have some drinks and talk about their day about being a better leader. I didn't realize that you can go to the top of a uh, of a high rise building and take selfies with somebody that you'll eventually have a future with. They didn't explain that that kind of stuff could happen when we were in dental school. They didn't explain that there would be an event that as a dentist, I could sign up to go help dental students. So now I'm even taking a step further and saying like, I didn't know that there were opportunities to become a mentor or a teacher or a presenter or a helper when I became a dentist. I thought once I walked across that stage, I would work on teeth, patients, and team members. And now I found out that through an event like this, I get to be a part of somebody like Lena's life or Kelly's life, or that I can maybe be a mentor for somebody or teach something and then go have a blast with a bunch of like-minded people trying to accomplish great things. That's what I think I learned from this event that really helped me change my perspective on what dentistry can be uh, after dental school. Yeah, and um, kind of going off that, I think before launch, I didn't quite understand how the CE worked into everything. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people, uh, when they're getting out of dental school, they're excited to um, start working. But I, I think there's always that little bit of nervousness too. Um, there's still things I want to learn. Am I fast enough? Am I ready to do molar endo? You know, just certain procedures that you want a little bit more um, help with. And so when I kind of when I kind of discover that Heartland kind of shapes your first year. Um, with heart, with uh, CE courses in specific areas, um, it's almost like you feel like you're getting the best of both worlds where you're you're working, but you're also kind of not, I wouldn't say it's, a, it's not like you're doing a GPR, but it's kind of like you're getting that education that will really help you have that confidence. Um, uh, it, it's just kind of like the perfect recipe for your first year out, in my opinion. So um, yeah, it's my, my, my favorite part about it. I think it might be a perfect recipe for the first three years. I'm at the three year mark yeah. and I feel like year two was amazing. Year three builds on that. I think year four is going to build on that. So right. I like that point. Thanks for sharing that, Lena. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And I can see that, you know, for me personally, I can see that being a, a constant and even getting involved later, maybe as a mentor. And that's an opportunity that's out there with the company. So it's not just, oh, I get in at the ground level and then I stay there. Like there's opportunity to grow even within, you, it doesn't stop here. It doesn't, you keep learning, you keep growing, you help others. And I like that there's an opportunity for that and that it's there for me because I, I agree. It's, it's kind of like having a safety net that isn't mm -hmm. as, as structured or something as maybe a GPR would be, but I still am gonna get a lot out of it in that sense. Right. Thanks for sharing, Kelly. I uh, I wanted to make sure that I really capture what launch is really all about. So I know we talked about what we experienced from it. I talked about being the last part of my four fundamentals. Uh, but what is launch really? It's going to be a leadership summit. It, it's a way to get a bunch of people into the, the same building, learning topics that can help change the way you look at dentistry and look at yourself as a leader. So a, a true leadership summit can be anything from a week to a day to an hour where you get a bunch of people together that are trying to accomplish something and information is being passed down, such as motivation or topics or, or, or anything that would cause you to say, ah, that was an aha moment. Let me write this down. And that's what launch really is. So uh, if you want to learn more about that process, write this number or this uh, website down, heartland.com slash launch. There, if I'm not mistaken, when I checked it out last, there's an agenda where you can see who the speakers are, how the agenda is broken down will show you how serious this project is and how awesome this leadership summit is. Uh, so check it out and see if it's something that fits you. If it doesn't, don't waste your trip. Don't waste your time. If it's something when you look at the agenda and you're like, holy cow, that looks awesome, then start typing away. 
get logged in, get your application in. There's usually a phone call to follow to learn more about why you feel you'd be a good, uh, a good candidate for this summit. Uh, but that's what truly it is. If I could really summarize it, it's, it's an opportunity to be around a bunch of cool people for two to three days and learn how to be a better leader. It just happens to be sponsored by a great DSO, but it's not really about that. It's about the information that's being shared from the people that, that you can relate to. All right. Well, thank you all so much for being with us. Um, we'd like to thank you for participating in tonight's program. I'd also like to thank our speaker, Dr. Jacob Berger with Heartland Dental for presenting to us tonight, as well as Kelly Hines and Lena Mershow for sharing their experiences with us as well. This program was recorded and it will be posted on ASDA's website and emailed to all participants. We want to thank you so much for joining us and have a great night. Thanks. It was fun. It was nice to talk with you, Lena. Nice to talk with you, Kelly. I hope everybody got something out of today. Thanks.